Hey guys, coming up, I'm talking all about our recent workation to Amsterdam and Italy. Um, we have the best time and I'm sharing all the deets right here today. And don't forget to subscribe. Hello, hello everybody. Welcome to Better Together. Well, you know better, you get better. That's what we do here every single day. Our quote of the day. We travel not to escape life, but for life not to escape us. Good, right? Tell me what you think this means. What I think it means is we have to travel to re-engage and like re-get in touch with ourselves, to remember who we are. So that's why I want you to talk about like mm. on your travels, you know, taking a break, I feel like always brings breakthroughs. Mm. So that's kind of what I thought when I was reading the quote. Interesting. Mm -hmm. I like what do you that. think? Um, I don't know. That's why I figured since you picked it out, you had more time <laughs> with it to marinate with it. I did. Um, but for life not to escape us, I think... I think it's a little bit of both. I mean, I felt like I was escaping my life in Italy, but at the same time, I think the whole point is um, to not allow life to escape us. Like, don't let life just pass you by. You know, there's there's so much more out there than we um, think about on a daily basis, right? There's eons and eons of history. There's... Um, there's so much going on and we are not even just ants. We're not even specks of dust. We are less than specks of dust. Yep. And so I think that's what travel, um, can do mm. is remind you of that. And so it kind of can put your ego in check, but also can, um, you know, lead to a lot of breakthroughs. So we will get into that. First of all, I'd like to say hello to the heel squad. What up heel squad? Glad to be back with you today. We are going to talk about our uh, trip because Kevin and I have been away secretly. Um, so yeah, I don't post live from anywhere because Evie Pomporis, <laughs> our secret service our girl. friend uh, who's been on the show many times has taught me long ago that that is just bait for burglars and bad people. Yeah. And so she's taught me that. So I'm, I'm pretty secretive when I'm not at home, which is kind of weird, right? Because then if you post it later, if they're not paying attention to what you're writing, like I'm going to post all my Italian trip pictures and it's right. going to be like, are they going to come rob me while I'm home because they think I'm gone? Mm, do you scary. know what I mean? If they don't do. read the fine yeah, print. Yeah, so it's yeah, like, yeah. do I have to put in bold? I am currently <laughs> home. You might. Do not come rob me or kill me. I yes, a, I don't have anything for you to rob anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and have a huge German shepherd. Go rob the bank because yes. it's all there. Yes. <laughs> um, and I do have a huge shepherd who will eat you, mm -hmm. but, uh, yeah. So I don't post normally, um, when I'm live somewhere because of that. And I've also learned, I mean, Kyle Richards from Real Housewives of Beverly Hills was robbed when she said she was on her trip. And she said the only reason she had anything left was because I had been warning her a few, two nights before, um, or the night before she left for her trip, we were at the Kardashian Christmas holiday party. And I said, hey, now that you're, you know, you're in the neighborhood, we should, you know, connect you with our neighborhood watch. And she was like, oh, okay, no problem. When I'm back from my trip, let's connect. Mm. And then what happened was she packed the next day and she packed extra things and she loaned things to her daughter she wouldn't normally loan because she thought to herself, if something was to happen, what would I want to really make sure I kept? <clears throat> and so... Anyhow, um, I think uh, what was crazy was we got on our trip. So we, I had to go to Amsterdam for work. I was hosting uh, MTV's The Challenge Reunion. Um, I've hosted real world reunions and challenge reunions for eons for them uh, until um, I wasn't allowed to contractually at some point. And then I finally came back recently. And so a lot of the cast was international and they, you know, it was just made more sense to do it in Amsterdam, which I was super excited about because I had never been there. So we planned a workation, my favorite kind of trip, a little work, a little vacation that you don't feel as guilty. I know that sounds crazy for me to feel guilty about going away, but I do. Um, <clears throat> and then also the most expensive part of the trip is already handled the flights. So 
we went to Amsterdam to film film the challenge reunion. We had a quarantine for three days for the production, not for Amsterdam. And I also had to watch 19 episodes of the show. So we were literally watching these episodes until one in the morning before like my 7 a.m. call time. And I were just consuming, consuming, consuming. And we're diehard fans of the show. So it was great. I mean, I could have been watching it before, but I really just was like, we have to quarantine anyway, so I might as well watch them when I'm there. Well, and more fun with Kev, too. And more fun with Kev. I haven't seen Kevin how long. He's been on the East Coast Mm -hmm. forever. So we did the show, and, um, and it was cool. It was definitely, you know, you're like a a mediator at times it like gets crazy. People get really heated because they have a lot of history with each other. And the thing is, is if people talk over each other, they're not going to use it in the edit. So at some point, once everyone's talking over each other and everyone's fighting, then you have to like get everyone to stop. And then also you'll hear in your ear, they'll be like, we're going to be here till 11 if you don't get them to stop. And I'm like, Ugh! So no way, that's oh, kind of fun. Yeah, it got crazy. I was like, guys, enough, stop! No they were like, way. The producers are like cheering for me in the in my ear, and I'm like, I've never done that before, but I had no idea how to get them to listen. And then I was like, next time I'm just gonna walk off stage. So what I started doing after is I would just turn my chair like the voice and just meditate, and I would like wrap white light around me and just pray that they would stop. And then like security would come in and get them to stop, or the no production way. people, yeah. <clears throat> because oh my God. listen, it's a competition. The prize is a million dollars and a lot of these people have history with each other. <laughs> and so it was, it was crazy, but it's fun. And, and they're a good group. Do and you know when it comes out? I don't know when it comes out, but I also foster the peace. It was funny. They're like, mm-hmm. you don't have to be the peacemaker. I'm like, but I like making peace with everybody. I like everybody coming to, you know, an understanding of why I acted this way. Cause we're, the thing is, is we're all going to make mistakes. We're all going to say something stupid sometime. And we live in such an unforgiving time and everyone is just so righteous. Like, let's just all get to the place where we know none of us are perfect. What's the thing? Like let, let ye, he without sin cast the first stone. You've never know. heard that before. Uh-uh. Let he without sin cast the first stone. Think about that. Let he without sin. So. I'm like, yeah, I'm going to need you. You can't throw elaborate. a stone if you have sinned yourself. Uh, Let he without sin cast the first stone. I feel like that's challenging in this current day and age. No, no, no. You can't judge someone because you have done these things at some point. Right. There's no one who hasn't made a mistake in life. Mm. So if you are perfect, then go right ahead. <laughs> but there's nobody who's no been perfect. One. No one. But what was cool was watching all of these, you know, young people kind of finding their way. Some people are a little behind in the journey. Some people are more ahead. It was really cool to see people own up to their shit and be like, you know what? I totally fucked up and I'm really sorry. And then watching whether people would accept it or not. Right. It was really interesting. It was really, there were some people who were giving me complete lessons and like full apology and just ownership over things and other people who were showing me, I mean, I just learned so much. It's, it's, I always think it's fascinating um, to see people on the journey kind of figuring out their, their way. And then the craziest thing. So it was, we wrapped, everybody was super like positive after and hugs and kisses or whatever. And even like different people who were like frustrated that I was like holding them to the fire were like, you were really good. And I was like, thanks guys. <clears throat> I'm like, I'm just listening to what they're telling me and I'm doing the job that they want me to do. These are not my questions. Generally, I have my own questions. Of course I add in because I'm curious about things, but you know, they have an agenda and they have things that they want to know. Um, and these guys know they, you know, the vets at least know. Yeah, right. They've been through it. They've been through it. So they know. I'm curious because I know at least with like Love Island and stuff, when you have the UK and the Australia and like the, you know, different versions, it's usually a younger group. <clears throat> what was the age, like the general age range with them? Um, well, there was up to 40 ish. Oh, wow. But all the way down to 
you know, maybe 19. early 20s, uh-huh. maybe. Um, Crazy. I wasn't asking people's ages, but first of all, everyone came so decked in the most beautiful wow. wardrobe that they were like, hey, um, I think your outfit's going to be a little casual. No way. Yeah. And so I was like, oh, shit, sorry. Um, last time, everybody was super casual, so I just went casual. <laughs> so we were At like... At least they told you. They're great. The producers are really great. Um, and so last minute, the stylist mm. had um, <clears throat> some pieces. And so I ended up wearing this like cool navy jacket. And she had these like vintage vintage Versace earrings from the era when Elizabeth Hurley wore that black dress from Versace with the pins on the sides. Well, these were pin earrings. And so I actually got to be warm and comfortable on set, which was great. Um, and so anyhow, um, we had a great shoot. I, I was able to usher in some peaceful moments. Some people didn't have, weren't ready for peace and then others were. And, um, and then, um, and then we're all having like a drink after like, you know, at the wrap and one of the girls, mom, mom, I think it was her mom died. And to see the producers literally drop everything. Like I think they even dropped drinks and ran and like literally I get the chills from having the complete opposite experience in my life. These producers were so incredible and so loving. They ran, they took action, they figured it out. They got like people on set instantly to help her. Um, Doctors, everything. It was like unbelievable. It was really beautiful. So it kind of ended amazing. really sad yeah. and sad, I but know because I feel like I hope, <clears> you know, <throat> that more, l- more like that, less or like how your experience was. Yeah. But I, you know, it was, it was sad and I started thinking, I'm like, I really understand that feeling of getting that call. And then I started realizing, oh, I've really gotten a lot of those calls. That's kind of crazy. Um, and so you know, I messaged her and, and, um, prayed and all of that. Um, so that was MTV. And then we went on a tour of Amsterdam. So Amsterdam, they call like the Venice of the North because they have canals. Everyone's on bikes. Generally it's like very bike heavy. Have you been there? I forget. No. Mm-mm. Oh my God. I know. We almost died by bike many oh. times in Amsterdam because you don't like at first you don't People know just go. where you're supposed to be, where <laughs> not. So it's yeah. like I'm avoiding cars, I'm avoiding bikes. And the bikes, even though they have a path, they're still kind of all over the place. And so one time I got a little dizzy. I was walking, I got dizzy, and the bike almost hit me. And I and then I got dizzy again, and another one almost hit me. And so Kevin grabbed me and I'm like, ugh. Um, and he was like, yeah, I was texting and walking to get, um, some coffee for us. And he's like, the same thing happened to me. I just almost got killed. So he's like, I realized you can't be on your phone. And when you walk around, you don't really see people on your, on their phones there. Same with London. That's how it was. It was like, you would literally either die by a double decker bus or a bike. You had to be so present. Yeah. So present. I think that's kind of cool though. I love that. Yeah. I mean, I don't love the almost dying, but thank God you're okay. There's so much history there too. Um, Like all those skinny little homes. And then we got to learn, there was a little like um, area where a lot of Jewish people lived and they were of course taken in the war and they were showing us, he showed us this zoo where they hid um, a lot of Jewish people back, you know, in that time. And they hid them in the cages of the animals and at during the day, they had to clean the cages, apparently. So the 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 Jewish people who were being hidden had to walk in plain sight where the German soldiers were. So the soldiers spent their day off there and they're walking around Ooh, scary. their potential captors. It was so creepy and so scary. Um, to think about, but they never got caught. And there was one day when um, the German soldier said, we want to see the cages. And the the person, you know, that was in charge thought very quickly and said, um, you know, um, 
I can let you see the cages, no problem. But there is a really bad illness amongst the animals right now that's contagious to humans. So enter at your own risk, but I'm happy to take you down, no problem. But we're not even going in there. Clever. So My clever. God. It was so creepy. So Ooh. we didn't get to see Anne Frank's house because they were booked out way before we knew we were going to be there. Um, we did see the church, and I took a picture in front of it that I'm posting. We did see the church she had a view of from her room, and I guess like that was kind of like her hope. I don't remember the book I read it so long ago when I was little, um, but um, but it was it was a uh, it was a really cool place. We went to the red light Dutch district. I was gonna say, I kept telling Kevin, <laughs> Kevin, if you would like, you can go in and partake. I oh will totally allow God. it. <laughs> um, he was like, "Stop!" I'm like, "Honey, come on, quick, Annie, let's go." <laughs> <laughs> I can't. Well, and it's like, it's so um, interesting because it's legal. Oh, yeah. Totally illegal I there. Um, and um, and families live there, which is so strange, right? Like, it's all just, like, very normal. For us, it's different, right. obviously. That's so crazy. Um, and then what else did we see? Do you guys see a lot of um, tourists there at that time? Or was it a lot more? I don't really know. Yeah. Um, we did do a canal ride, which was super cool. And then that was that. Um, I, um, I, um, what was I going to say? Oh, then we went to Venice from there, the real Venice. And so, and you know, I have this itinerary. So, um, let me see my, my travel people are amazing and I'm just trying to see what their Instagram handle is because I can never remember it's creations underscore world concierge okay so creations world concierge so they've been doing my travel for me for uh, many years they did our honeymoon European trip our Italy trip then um, I mean lots of trips to Mexico but these two trips to Italy um, they're really, really good with Italy and really good with international travel. And I think they do like Deepak Chopra's travel and stuff like that. So they know the best tour guides, they know the best places to stay. And so they did a really great job with our honeymoon too. So of course, when I knew we were going to Amsterdam, I was like, Hey, can you help us? And they're like, of course. And so they put the whole trip together and, and they have this cool app that makes it super easy. So you don't have to keep looking back to find the email with the itinerary. It's oh, just on the app. that's cool. It was amazing. Best wow. thing ever. So I would just refer to the app. And so when we were going to Venice, it was like water taxi to the hotel. And I'm like, water taxi to the hotel. Now, mind you, I have no idea what we're getting into, right? Because I, it's not like I've studied Venice or I know very much. I mean, I've seen canals, but I didn't know it was all canals, and so we get there, we get in this boat and I'm like, holy shit, this is literally a city all in water. It was crazy. It's the most insane, like you don't feel like it's real. No, first yeah. of all, nothing in Italy feels real. <laughs> it all looks like a painting. Like if you look at my pictures, they all look like I'm superimposed. It all looks fake. Kevin kept saying, are we on the back lot at Warner Brothers Studios? Literally, because that's yes, what it feels like. Yes. <laughs> so anyhow, um, uh, my travel people, Elizabeth and Salima, Salima owns the business, did such a great job. Um, and the app was so gangster. And so they sent us to the St. Regis, I know, super fancy, um, at uh, in Venice. And we stayed there and it was beautiful. And it was right on the water. And... Um, you know, breakfast outside was a joke. Like you're literally on the water watching gondoliers ride their boats and, um, and take people around and people were coming, like we would be at dinner and all of a sudden people would show up on a gondolier and you would see the door open to the restaurant, like a side door. And it's people coming in through the gondolier, like through the, through the boat, through water taxi. So crazy. I was like, Oh my God, that's so cool. People yeah. are like, jumping up into the, to the restaurant. So, so cool. Uh, so Venice was incredible and, um, and just so beautiful. Like everywhere you turned, it was just picturesque. Um, and we got lucky because we never had any high tide. So I don't know if you knew this, but when high tide comes in, they have to put all of these, um, like the, the, the bridges or the dam kind of thingies? No, they're um, platforms huh. that you have to walk on. 
Oh my God. So it's like, cause the city's literally flooding. Yeah. Like wow. platforms. Like imagine if you're painting a house and you've got these, like yeah. those high platform things. Wow. So the day we were leaving, it was about to be high tide. And by the way, the entire trip was so blessed because it was supposed to rain everywhere at every time. And every time it would be sunny. It was 100% rain on the weather report. I'm like, oh, we're screwed today. Nope, sun, beautiful. Beautiful. That's uh, Lita smiling down on you. Yes, it was incredible. So we did Venice. We went to um, the doja where they had the dojas and... Um, I stood up at the top and I took the people, people were down at the bottom. I said, you are all safe in my hands. I'm like talking to them. Like if they even knew. Oh my God. <laughs> um, and then, um, what else? I kept like a little travel diary. Actually, I should probably open it up. Um, so, uh, was there see. a place or something that like surprised you that you were like, oh, this is going to be, you know, you didn't know what to expect. And you were like, oh my God, this was everything. Wait, actually, you know what I forgot to say? Hmm. Back to Amsterdam. One of the things I noticed was there was like no plastic surgery. Everyone looked like real people. That was interesting to me. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and the airport, you could hear a pin drop. It was so calm wow. and so chill and there were no like crazy loud Americans. Oh my God. <laughs> like we're just savages. We're just nightmares. We are horrible. Truly. Um, <laughs> and so it was really funny. Um, uh, and then Venice, yeah, I have breathtaking. Felt like we were on a movie set. Um, the food, the food was a little eh. In Venice, it was a lot of seafood. Interesting. Um, I wasn't really crazy because that was our first stop. So I was dying for pasta yeah. and like yummy, yummy stuff. Yeah. Um, but um, touring the Doja Castle was cool, and they really kind of put their faith ahead of all things. Whereas in Rome and the Vatican, <clears throat> I remember when I was there, I was like, Kevin, your peeps, they're um, they were not about the church. They were really just about power. Ah. It's really crazy. And you know, the Vatican's its own country. It's got its own, like yeah. nobody knows what they have in their bank accounts. No one knows what they have. Like it's very, very crazy. Um, anyway, uh, there's no crime in Venice. Um, oh, and not, not in Amsterdam either, by the way. Mm -hmm. Um, I loved it there so much. Um, I think it's my number one spot ever. Venice. Yeah. Yeah. Riding the gun, um, the, the, the boats with the gondoliers was super romantic. Like if you ever go, you have to have to do it. Very fashionable people there. Um, yeah. I want to know, talk to us about the fashion or like, what were a couple things that you were like? Well, one thing I noticed just traveling in general is that we all dress the same. <laughs> it's very true. And so I've always really appreciated individualism. Like I love like people who just do their own thing because it takes so much courage. That's why when you look at someone who's dressed differently, don't think of them as like weird or, you know, think of them as like, wow, they're really brave because they have the power within themselves to just truly be themselves. Everyone, the rest of us were just like, what's the trend? Oh, that's the cool thing. Let's do it. And so I was just noticing it. If there was a couple the husband and wife had something that was similar. Like they both were wearing the thin puffer jackets or they had both worn like the same kind of white sneakers or they were both boot people or they both had jeans on or they both had, you know, trench coats or they both had caps. Like girls that were together, there was like one set of girlfriends and they both had knit skirts on. The other ones had high-waisted jeans. These ones were wearing sweats and Interesting. everyone dresses the same. Yeah. So that was one thing. <laughs> Um, then we went from Venice, uh, and we went, oh, I think Venice, we had the fried pizza that was insane. Um, that was, I think it was in Venice. Maybe it was in Florence. Anyway, so Florence, we stayed at the Hotel Savoy and this had the most spectacular view. We had an insane room there. They upgraded us to thank you American express as well for those beautiful upgrades everywhere. But, um, but the, the view was of like the plaza and this like merry go round and it was just heaven. Um, super beautiful. They took such good care of us. I loved that hotel. They were really, really great. Um, the sites were jaw dropping the church in the center 
was insane. We got to see the David. I think I told you. So growing up Greek, you see all these statues of naked people all the time. I'm like, okay. Like, you're immune to you're it. You're immune and you're <laughs> numb to it. Yeah. When you get to see the David in person, this is Michelangelo's, the you know, David, and you get to hear the history behind it, just like anything, when you hear the history behind something, it's so much more meaningful, but he had one marble slab and he had to sculpt out of that marble slab, this perfect man. And at the um, request of... Um, Gosh, what was the guy's name? Lorenzo. It might have been one of the Medici's, but Lorenzo, I think, was his name. He took, a, Michelangelo took an anatomy class. No one had done that before. So he would go work on cadavers and learn the muscles, the tendons, the, the bones. So he builds this David, right, who fought Goliath and had the slingshot and stuff. And you see, like, absolute perfection and I think they used cloth to to soften and sh and make everything smooth. I think it was like a cloth thing. Anyway, um, it was a sight. And they said that there were some doctors, I think, from like MIT who had come there and said this was literally done perfectly. It's just fascinating to think of like people with such incredible talent. A slab of marble shows up and he makes this perfect man out of it. Crazy. I, I don't know. Um, then we saw, we went to a museum and we saw, uh, Leonardo da Vinci's paintings and we saw the Annunciation and the Annunciation was unreal. So that was when I guess like perspective art came in. And so if you watch, if you look at the painting from this side, the table that like the angels coming to is from one side, you go to the other and it's facing you over here and you're just like, how the hell did people know how to do this stuff back then? But he studied, you know, math and uh, I don't know. It was really unbelievable. Um, and I have video of it that I took that was crazy. Um, we had incredible pizza in Rigatoni. There was this restaurant called Tertoria 13 Gabo. The Rigatoni with sauce and mozzarella was crack. I wish I got to go back there again and have more, but I will come back another time. Um, we had really, uh, we had a really great tour guide named Sandra there who was so sweet. Thank you, Sandra. Um, and then... Was Sandra Italian or was she American? Italian. Ah, I love. Yeah, she was super sweet. Um, and then, so we went to this, so we changed up our plans on the last day of Florence. We were going to do like a food tour and I'm like, no, I really want to go to Tuscany. John Amaral, our friend and healer on the show, was like, you got to go to Tuscany. So we go to Tuscany and we have an incredible lunch at this restaurant where we got like Florentine steak. Have you ever had Florentine steak? No. So it's like this big steak. I mean, it literally probably could feed like an army, but there's like this big steak. I took a picture of Kevin and made it look like it was his penis. So amateur. Oh my God. <laughs> I was like, honey, look, <laughs> I'm such a child. Um, but um, we went to Tuscany. It was beautiful. And then we went to this place um, in uh, Siena where they had built a church before the one in the center in Florence. And um, it was beautiful, beautiful. And she was telling me kind of how the Catholics pray to um, the Madonna. And it's similar to us. And so I get in the car after. And I mean, I must have thanked God about a thousand times on this trip. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. I get in the car. I lay down on Kevin. And I start praying to the Virgin Mary. And I said, you know, I really hope my mom is up there just dancing and having fun. And I just started envisioning her like kind of floating around and all this stuff. And then I said, you know, but if, if she could still just like look out for us, that would be great. Um, especially my dad, he needs it the most. And, and so then I kind of like took a little nap. I wake up and I kind of got up really abruptly and grabbed my phone real fast. And I see a text from my dad's caretaker and all I saw was dead and conscious and like some key words. And I started like, Kevin, 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 just panicking. I couldn't read because when I panic, I can't do anything. And so, um, yeah, my dad had been in this like horrible car crash. 
his blood sugar had dropped super low. He told me he was listening to one of the songs that um, he loved and thought about my mom about, you know, he thinks about my mom every time when she was alive, but also now with her being gone, it was like, I never thought I'd be without you kind of thing, the song. And he crashed into a dead end, flew in the air. I think it was 10 feet, then went down 20 feet into a ravine, hit multiple trees. And I guess some older gentleman must have heard it or he must have been around a house and he ran out and my dad, you know, somehow survived it and was climbing out of the car and the paramedics came and the caretaker and my brother were home. And when he hadn't shown up when they expected him, they got panicked when they called the paramedic answered the phone. Oh my God. I didn't know this. Yeah. Wow. And so they raced over to where he was cause it was not far from our house. And, um, and then, um, got to the hospital. Of course I got the text and I, you know, and so I'm FaceTiming with my dad and he's all, um, blood, all blood here, his neck. He's speaking, thank God. And he's alive. Um, but he was super weak and, you know, it's crazy because he would have died from the low blood sugar any second, but the trees that he crashed into that should have killed him are the ones that saved him because that's how somebody found him and could call 911 because he knew he had juice in the car, but he wasn't understanding his sugar dropped so low. He's like, I knew I had my phone, but I didn't know how to use it. Like he just was not with it. It's like when you're super, super drunk, kind of like imagine that and you're just useless. So, you know, it was just like horrifying and, God bless like Dimitri and Alyssa. Dimitri's ready to get on a plane. Alyssa was like, I'll drive down. And I was like, thank you guys. I'm like, I think he's going to be okay. Um, and so that was crazy. And, um, and when I look at the timing, <laughs> the crazier part of it is it happened when I was praying for him. So like, if you just can imagine that I just think it's so insane that I'm asking for my mom to like look over Watch my dad. Over. And I had just found audio recordings of her saying, you know, just let your dad know I'll always be looking out for him and wow. I'll always be watching his sugar from the other side. And wow, it's so intense. I thought we were going to have to get on a plane. And last time we were in Italy, we had to leave our trip five days earlier because Benjamin, our, our beloved Bijan, was dying. And so we raced home. So now I'm like, Oh God, here we go again. Um, but I stayed calm. You did. I mean, when you texted me, my, cause you just said pray for my dad or say a prayer for my dad. My heart literally fell into my butt. I was like, I, I like, I'm not even kidding you. I yeah. was like, <laughs> like what? what? Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, freaking talk to him. And he was laughing. Yeah. And I was like, but Thank his you. caretaker, um, is in the back going, Kelsey, he's crazy. And he's laughing on the phone. And I'm just yeah. like, uh, 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 what? Yeah. Costa. Yeah. Yeah. Like, holy unbelievable. I mean, the car is totally yeah. totaled. We also had just been talking about the minivan. Yeah. <laughs> um, car totally totaled. Peter was like, my brother was like, I can't unsee what I saw. Mm. Like it was that bad. And so, you know, I, I had a conversation. The doctor goes, so I hear you're a doctor. And I go, no, I just play <laughs> one on my show. I'm a fake doctor. <laughs> um, and so, uh, and then God bless Dr. Burke, our chiropractor. I sent him my dad's images instantly. He was like, he's fine. It's just it, what's happening with his back is just age related, nothing with the accident. And then I sent Dr. Aaron in, God bless him, um, the stuff in his brain. So he has like some white matter in there, but that's like all like age stuff, I guess. I'm going to have a neurologist double check everything, but you know, his blood sugars have dropped low for so many years. You lose brain cells with it. Like there's stuff because of that. But of course I panic whenever I get any kind of report with brain stuff. Oh yeah. Um, and so we somehow, you know, thank you, God, mom, thank you, Virgin Mary, everybody 
full team effort upstairs to keep this man alive. <laughs> he's had not nine lives. He's not a cat. So many he's lives. He's not a tiger. He's like a litter of tigers. Okay. This man had already crashed into a tree. I think it was two or three years ago. Shows us the mark every time we drive by. Yeah. Right by our house, <laughs> slipped on ice, smashes into a tree. Then a week later, my brother slips on ice in the same place, smashes into a tree further down. Now my brother's head was completely cut open. Um, but you know, my dad has died and almost died a million times. And so we were really, really lucky this time. So the next morning I FaceTime him and he's driving and laughing. And I go, wait, dad, you're not in any kind of pain. I, I put him on a protocol. I was like, okay, we're going to take some Advil for information. So when you wake up, cause I was like, he's going to be beat up. I mean, Soar. he literally yeah. soared through the sky and just, oh my God. anyway, he's totally fine. Yeah. Laughing. Like it was nothing, oh, yeah. like mm -hmm. nothing happened. He's unreal. I can't. And so I want to be Costa when I grow up. Yeah. He's, he's a beast. Mm -hmm. So thank God we dodged okay. that bullet. Um, and luckily, um, got to continue on with our trip when we moved on from Florence, <laughs> knowing he was okay, thank God, uh, to Milan. We did uh, a little quick trip there because the Mil in Milan, the city center where like the mall is, it's like almost like the Grove on steroids. So when we were there, so the, in LA, we have this thing called the, the Grove. The Grove on steroids. Yes. <laughs> in LA, we have this thing called the Grove. It's like a, an outdoor mall. And um, Richard Caruso created this beautiful like shopping attraction area that's beautiful and when we were there, Kevin's like, for sure, this is what he modeled it after. Wow. Um, huh. It was so beautiful. And then you see this like big church and Kevin goes, of course, just another insane church. When was that built in 400? Like, it's crazy. The history everywhere around you in Italy is insane. Um, so we went, um, we went kind of around the mall. We had lunch. And of course, I was like, I kind of want to get a little something here. So I went in a Prada and I bought myself a little something. Um, but now I'm like, oh, maybe I shouldn't have it for myself. Maybe I should give it away. Um, but I really want it. You should keep it. Um, so then whenever you look at it, you're going to be like, oh, I got that in Italy for myself. Little treat. Yeah. It'll make you smile. Yeah. So um, I'm team keep it. I got all my Christmas shopping done there. Damn. <laughs> I mean, smart though. Tax free, baby. Oh, they're tax free. Tax free. Damn. When you buy. So, um, yeah, it's actually, Anastasia had told me how she goes international to do mm, all of her shopping. Smart. It makes so much sense. You save like 20% or something. Anyway, so Christmas shopping done. <laughs> You're going to love your Prezi. Oh my God. You're going to die. Wait. It's so cute. <laughs> I can't wait. Um, then we went from there to Lake Como. So Lake Como, if you don't know, is literally like heaven on earth. And so that's where, of course, George and Amal live, George Clooney. Um, we stayed at this place called Villa de Este. So my neighbor, who also is a travel agent, was like, you got to stay there. And of course, Salima and Elizabeth were like, we're booking you at Villa de Este. And I go, oh, that's where they said we should stay. Um, it was like a super old hotel, but it was so stunning. When you walk into the front lobby, like if you go there, by the way, there's a Sheridan down the street. I'm sure is super nice too. Um, and if you're going on a budget, like do that and then just go to Villa de Este for breakfast or something. The view is like these big windows and then just the water. And it's so perfect and picturesque. So um, it was gorgeous. We went into town um, and that's when I did a little bit more damage and I bought myself a new wardrobe. <laughs> <laughs> It was just super cool. Um, it was a store that had the exclusive on this designer. Ooh. And um, I'll post about it. And um, and it was just unique stuff that I've just not seen. And this one jacket in particular, you're going to lose your shit. It's like imagine a bomber jacket, mm -hmm. but to the floor. And it's reversible. Ooh, so it's a twofer. It's a twofer. So love that. On the inside is this like faux fur, but it's like a texture that's like swirly mm. black. Cute. So if I need to be dressy. So now this is like a great coat for me to... For travel. For travel, right? Yeah. And then on the other side is like black, like nylon-y 
So good. Bomber. Ooh, I can't wait to see it. Jackets are my favorite thing in the world. Oh my God. It was so cool. So, um, anyhow, um, we went, um, went to Lake Como and Lake Como was like the end of the trip. So it was two nights. It was just relaxing, shopping. We made friends in the hot tub. So outside, (laughs) I said, Kevin, there's a floating pool in the lake. And I go, they said it's heated. Like we should go. And so that was the night we had that fancy dinner that we posted Mm. about on Better Together. Yeah. So guys, we go to this restaurant and, you know, the hotel is like, we don't really belong. I don't know how else to put it. We're not those fancy people. We're just staying at a fancy place. Um, And so we walk into the restaurant. It's like nine o'clock. We had just come in from shopping all day and we were hungry and so we sit down and I open the menu and now I'm embarrassed because it's like faux gua this, lamb balls that, like super caviar this. And I'm like, this is not food we eat. There was nothing on the menu that I saw that was going to please me because I really just wanted like a cheeseburger and fries. And so anyway, I got some some pasta. I got like a lobster ravioli thing. And then... Um, my eyes twitching right now. And then Kevin got some beef thing. Oh no. And he got the lamb ball soup or whatever. I took one day's of the lamb balls and I was like, they were horrible. Um, the rest of the food was delicious and it was great, but it's definitely like not our kind of like thing. So after that, I said, we should go into the hot tub. And so we did, um, maybe it wasn't the first night. I think it was the second night. No, it was the first night. Yeah, the first night. So we went to the hot tub and there was a couple in there. I'm like, oh shit, I didn't have a bathing suit. Somehow I forgot to pack a bathing suit. And so I had a sports bra and I had just like my thong underwear. It was all black. So I was like, oh, no one's going to see. So we get there and I'm like, oh shit, people are going to see. <laughs> so so we get there and I just basically am like, oh, is it hot in there? And they're like, it's not really that hot. I'm like, oh no. You're great. And I said, well, I'm like, I really don't have a bathing suit. So, um, you know, I'm just going to kind of, and they're like, oh no. And I think she didn't have something or whatever on another trip. And it was just like, they were so cool. So we like jump in and the hot tub's not hot. It's like 40 degrees oh, out. Oh, God. And it's really not hot enough in there. <laughs> so I'm like hugging my body, my arms over my whole, are wrapped around me, my legs over each other. And I'm just like trying to make myself as small and, you know, connected as possible to keep warm. But we had so much fun with this couple, Britta and Ricardo, our new friends. Um, and, uh, And so we had champagne in the hot tub. And then at some point we all had to pee and I was freezing and mad dash. I got out last and no one saw my ass. Um, Hilarious. I'm sorry. I needed water. (laughs) I got out last and no one would have to see my ass. And so run out. um, Unless there are people with binoculars on the other side of Lake Como in the night, then they saw my ass. Um, So we, I made a run for it and I just, I got into, um, um, the hotel and just ran to my room and got into a hot, hot shower, hot, hot bath. Kevin and I fell asleep in this like small bathtub. He put the hot water in after we took a shower and he laid in it. And then I laid on top of him, like my butt on his stuff like this. <laughs> and we fell asleep because we were shivering. We were so cold oh, that we needed to just God. sit in hot water. <laughs> um, so, um, so yeah, we, we did that and it was super fun. Um, and we did take a little boat ride around Lake Como, which was nice. And I think because it was off season, things were cheaper. So mm. I was like, oh, okay. That's boat rides. Okay. Not expensive. I'm, I'm into that. Did you see George in Amal's house? We did. Um, and then, um, a lot of like the old villas and, and the people that owned them and stuff. Cause there's so much history. There was like the Versace villa right. and, um, it was just like magical. And when I think about, we haven't gone on vacation in three years since our honeymoon before that, I mean, maybe a Mexico trip. Maybe. <laughs> like, it's just, we really haven't had a lot of time, um, together. Sometimes I've gotten workations. Like I had to go to Australia for E and me and Dimitri, you know, tagged on a couple of days and 
But for me and Kevin, like we really are not able to travel together a lot. And so it was really nice. And especially after like losing my mom and having to take care of them for so long, um, it was just kind of so needed. That's why I kind of was like, I don't care what it costs. I don't care. I was like, if I, this is how I looked at it. And sometimes I think you have to look at things like this because I'm always fear-based and I'm always afraid of money and I'm always afraid of this and that. I'm like, if I was to die tomorrow, would I be okay with not having done this? And I was not going to be okay. And so I know how, how short life is. I know how precious it is. And I was like, yeah, not okay. Why are we not living? And the cool thing when you meet Europeans, like my dad always says about my my Kubari, the people who married us in Greece, Marietta and Leon, I baptized their daughter. He's like, Maria, Marietta and Leon, they travel, they live life. They go here, they go there. You people, you work like animals. And I was like, well, yeah, I learned it from you. Yeah. But True. Yes, exactly. Mm-hmm. So we're not, um, we're not kind of trained here to kind of live like that. We're really trained to hustle, make it, and then... Once you make it, you realize now you're in this cycle and you don't know how to get out of it and you don't know how to go live. Um, And so what I realized on the trip, one of the things I realized was I want more of those European friends that are going to remind me to travel and live. But when we were there, I said to Kevin, I want to spend three months in Italy and Greece every year. You should. No, 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 not us. All of us. Oh, let's do it. We are going to do the show. I'm so in. We are going to do the show from Greece and Italy. One billion percent. We will get Ryan to go get us sponsors. Heck yeah. And we will live in Italy and Greece, hop back and forth. And so we in. will go do the show from there, live and enjoy life. Like I'm going to make this so that we can have the lifestyle that we want and and live by example and show people kind of like how you can, you know, figure these things out. Because we're going to figure it out one way or another. Because um, next summer, and I don't know if it'll be in the heat of summer. It might be like... A little off season. April, May, June. Yeah. Or it could be September, October, November. So in. Anytime. Sign Either way, we are going to figure it out and we are going to go. Um, make sure I talk to Ryan. He <laughs> <laughs> handles our, our stuff. Um, but I think that, um, I think, uh, cause he was talking about it. He's like, we should do something like overseas, whatever. I was like, yes, we should. Um, but you know, Europeans, that's what they do. They're more bred to live and enjoy like this couple last minute. They're like, yeah, let's go to Villa de Este. And I was like, I love that. We don't do that stuff. No. Um, and I don't want to live like us. that anymore yeah. because I worked hard in my life really, really hard. And I have, you know, invested and I have properties and I have all this stuff. So it's like, okay, do I want it there? Or do I want to now live it? So I'd rather rifle things, simplify my life and then be able to travel and do what I need to do and not have all these things kind of weighing me down. Amen. They do it so, right. So that was one of the things that I learned. The other thing I learned is I'm an excellent packer. I You are. You honestly really are. I'm telling you, Packing for this trip was a lot of work. So I created my travel toiletry kit. Um, when our new website is up, which it should be soon. I don't know if I'm going to hold it till the new year. Probably. I don't know. Maybe, maybe we have to do it before the holidays so that people can get the benefit of all the things that we can share with them. So we probably will. Um, but um, the new website will have blogs. It'll have links to everything. You know, when I was in Italy, we met this Um, couple next to us in a restaurant. She's like, wait, what do you do for your hair? What do you do for your skin? I was like, everything's on my website, but it's not even the way it's going to be. Like, it's going to be so much better in the new way. Um, But I nailed packing. My travel kit was so bomb. I had that one bag. Everything was in it. Now, I have a little bit more of a complicated situation being on camera because I have to bring so many more things than the average person. But the average person still wants to look like they're on camera nowadays. So the real deal is we're not that different. So um, I had everything in that one case, which I've photographed, videoed. We're going to put all in our, you know, travel blogs that you'll see on the website. And it was like a little thing I bought on Amazon. It was super cheap. 
and I created the different compartments. So it was like toiletries, skin, makeup, brushes, everything was in there. And, uh, and I really, really loved it. And then with clothes, I packed black and tan. So I had my New Balance cream and tan sneakers that went with everything. And I had my black Doc Martens that went with everything. And then I had a tan coat and a black coat went with everything. So I interchanged all these different pieces throughout the trip and my rag and bone Miramar joggers that we keep posting because they're my favorite jeans on the planet um, came so in handy because when you're traveling around and you're doing tours, you're going to have to pee all the time because you're going to need to be drinking a lot of water to stay hydrated. Do you really want to be undoing a belt, undoing a button, undoing zippers? No. I like to drop, go, move. It's so much easier. And also when you have to carry all this stuff, so I had like my little crossbody bag, I had our passports, had money, had chapstick, like I had all the important things that I needed super handy right there. Um, and it really was like seamless. Really, really excited about my packing on this trip. And I used everything. I didn't overpack. I was going to ask that. That's you know, what, when you yeah. overpack and you don't use even 10% of what you have in your Always. bag. I feel like I do that all the time. Not this time. Look at you. So I filmed everything I put in there. Like yeah. I had my, my Lululemon leggings. Um, I had my, I got this really cool knit sweatsuit from Splendid. And um, my friend Cassie from Blogilates had given me this tan sweatshirt hoodie. So I had that one hoodie. I would have loved to have had one black hoodie, but it was okay. I survived. Um, a black t-shirt, a white t-shirt, a black tank, a white tank. I had my other um, page jeans. So I had like a little bit of a dressier jean, um, a black leather legging. And um, anyway, I'm going to put all this in the blog because... I really feel like I finally, finally you nailed, nailed it. it. You did. Well, and all you're like looking through your pictures, it's like all the outfits look different. I mean, it's not like you're wearing the same thing, mm-hmm. but if I ever were to pack for a two week trip, I don't, I can't. I like your girl would bring a gazillion things. Then like you said, wear 10% of it. So yeah. And I also had to pack all my wardrobe right. for MTV right. in that same suitcase Holy cow! with two different pairs of shoes for that. Yeah. Because you have to have backups in case something happens. So I had to lug that stuff around as well. And I try to make use of some of it, yeah. but, um, and I brought one black purse, one tan purse, both cross bodies, nice and easy. So It was great. So good. And we had a really fun time. We had, we did find some sulfite free wine in some places. And Kevin said I was a messy drunk the day you guys were shooting or the day he shot his regular guy Friday. You honestly were. He, it was funny. He was like, (laughs) she messy. Yeah. Edit this part. I'm like, she sounds fine. She's just singing red, red wine. That's all you're doing. You were singing. Yeah. I thought you were funny. He was just mad. I was stealing his spotlight. <laughs> and we I kept threatening to cancel the show and he was getting upset. Hilarious. But we, um, when we went into Gucci and we were trying on um, that fur coat for him, I was dying. I'm like, we're going to start calling it Fabulous Guy Friday. He is so funny. Kevin, so here we are in these fancy ass places. I look like I fit because <laughs> at least I've got like, you know, he comes in and he's wearing a scarf with the big H&M tag hanging out, literally in front view. And I'm like, uh, not that like it matters. I love H&M. This whole outfit I'm wearing is H&M. But, but like when you're the in off. those places <laughs> yeah. where everyone's like super yeah. high end, it's just stark and it's funny. And, um, and he's got like his little Samsonite man bag. And I'm like... <laughs> I was dying. Dead. I'm like, you really are regular guy Friday. I Did love he it. get that fuzzy jacket? No. It was just a no, good, it was it just was, a good photo op. It was a good photo op for regular guy Friday. And then so him funny. prancing around in his robe. I can't. He makes me laugh so friggin' hard. Like in life, find yourself a partner that's gonna make you laugh because it's gonna be 25 years in April, okay, for me and Kevin. And he still makes me friggin' laugh. Still, every day, we're dying. Um, so I'm trying to think of any of the other funny moments. But Was it crazy when you guys reconnected because you literally haven't been together in forever? Yeah. I mean, it was great. It was weird to be able to like sleep in bed with him. And like, I like spooning and wrapping myself in every kind of way. I'm like, my leg here, arm around there. 
it was strange to be together. It was strange for him to not be living in the basement in Connecticut, you know, renovating and dust and paint and all of that. Um, but the house is really came together really nice. It's almost done. Furniture starting to come in. Um, so hopefully we can make it out there for Thanksgiving. I'm kind of worried if we're going to make it or not. Cause I'm kind of like cooked and to get on a plane for that right now, I just have to kind of gauge my dad and how much he would need us for Thanksgiving. I think he's going to need us more for Christmas. And I don't know if I can do both because the holiday fix up my movie, my Christmas movie for lifetime comes out on the 11th and I want to throw a bash and, um, and a viewing party. So I'll have to come back earlier for that. And then I get a shoot for Roku and I don't know what's going to happen. It's a whole thing. It's a whole thing. It's a whole thing. And you have Kev's birthday coming up. Mm-hmm. Birthday. His birthday. All the Scorpios. So crazy. We'll see. Well, I'm know. glad you guys are back. I'm glad you had an amazing time. Yeah. I'm trying to think if there's anything else to mention for it. We did, um, oh, well, we took a lot of trains too. Mm, fun. We did the train transports from like Florence to Milan and, um, the trains there were super easy and great too. And you can, I love trains. I, that's the one thing about like, that I loved about Europe, public transportation, freaking everything. Mm-hmm. You can work on the train. So you, easy. It's we blinked so and we were at places. It's amazing. You know, amazing. we stayed at the, um, Sheridan in the airport. And in Amsterdam, because we got there at night and um, Elizabeth, our travel agent, was like, you're going to want to go back into the city and stay at a nice hotel. I go, no, I really just want to stay at the airport and be really, you know, um, close because our flight's in the morning. We get there and this hotel, the Sheridan, was like gorgeous. It was so beautiful. And like you're walking through the airport and all of a sudden, here's the doors to the hotel, and you walk in and they've got like beautiful greenery and the room was really pretty and had a little couch area and stuff. I was like, this is awesome. Like what more do we need? Um, so it was great. We, we stayed and we woke up and rolled out of bed and went and Ooh, got on our plane. Perfect. Um, so, oh, and then we did Delta. I love sharing all the things like, because people like when they travel and stuff, we did Delta one there and back. There from Boston, no bueno. The airplane was really old and the food was from the 70s and that was not fantastic. The way back was a new plane. Fantastic food. We got a little like sausage, like pretzel bun roll at some point that was yummy. And um, and we've been watching impeachment. Have not watched. Do you even know what it is? No. Is it the one with the Bill Clinton? And- yeah. Yeah, yeah. Monica Lewinsky. Yeah. 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 I've um, been on my su- succession kick. Almost just started. And then we'll get into succession. So we were watching on the plane. Um, but yeah, overall, amazing, amazing trip. I'm going to be posting all the pictures um, coming up. So you'll get to kind of see, and I'll try to share any details that'll be helpful. And that's that. And that's that. But we back to the grind. That's right, baby. But we are going to find a way. Oh, to go. Heck Yeah. I'm in. Sign me up. Oh, I know. Sign I know you. I'm I like, she's tell, not even going to blink. Well, I used to tell my, fr- my, I have family up in like Northern Italy and literally all the time. I'm like, can I just come live? I'll work in like the flipping deli. Like, let's go. They're like, it just like, it just makes sense. Like you were saying. I'm I know. The it. only thing is, is the healthcare. See, and I, so they I'm said the, the healthcare. They said the healthcare is good there. Right. Um, But I mean, we just. It's hard when you know something so well, like even like leaving LA, we know it so well. We know the people that we have access to here, healers, doctors, whatever. When you leave, you have to start all that again. You're young, so it's different. You're just starting. Yeah. I'm like, I'm ready. I feel like I pay an arm and a leg every time I go. And then it's like, oh, here's another doctor you have to go to and another doctor. Yeah. And, an, uh, and I'm like, I'm sorry, how much am I paying for all this? I can't. So I'm like, let go. Yeah. But, but I understand. You're you, close though. Been, you're right. close to the finish line. Mm, you're like halfway there. Hopefully. I keep so. getting new diagnosis. I'm like deaf in my left ear currently. I keep getting. New stuff keeps happening every five seconds. Yeah, but you're you're but getting you're getting, getting to there. your good place. Yeah. Thank you, Gabby Bernstein, Thank you. for Truly. the SIBO doctor. Gabby and um 
God, I need to look up who sent me. Someone from the Heel Squad actually recommended. So it was like Gabby had mentioned. I read Gabby's blog um, got months and months ago, and she had mentioned it. And But at the time, I was like seeing someone else. I was like, I can't mention Mentioned it. Do you want to mention the person? It's Spark Health in Spark San Diego. Health. Yeah, okay. they're amazing. And I'll, I've, I want to do, if you're cool with it, like a Patreon or something where I talk about all of it because they've been insane. Um, but well, yeah, Spark Health. We could do an episode on SIBO. Yeah. It would be, I mean, I feel like I'm an expert now. Um, but yeah, so Gabby had written this whole blog on it and that's where I found it. And then someone else from the Heel Squad was like, hey, have you checked out this doctor? And I was like, well, isn't that funny? Maybe I should. That's and why I love the Heel Squad. Mm -hmm. All right, Heel mm -hmm. Squad. That's it for us today. We will do an episode on that though. Yes. Um, I want to shout out our $25 tier Patreon members. Some of them here that we have listed, Julie Tolick Prest, Lynn, Claire Stedman, Miranda Stupert, Stephanie Green Bass, Andrea Jenkins, Edward Looney, Elena Mifsid, Shannon Stern, and Ephthimiades, Jessica Rink, Helen Vito Yanis, Katina, Papa Nicolao, Ligdas, Teresa Palmer, Bobby Diamond, Brett, um, Helen Vlamis, Heather Goldman, Leah Tringali, Sandy Garfield, Anne Marie Jennings, Marilena, Marilena Falares. Thank you guys so much for being Patreon members. And if you haven't joined us on Patreon, we do our amazing heel events every month. Um, they are game changing and they're with our game changing experts we have on the show. Some of them mm -hmm. don't even take clients anymore. So it's super exclusive access to them. Um, you also get, get ad free shows and an extra show a week. So join us on Patreon. You can click the link in the summary of this to join at the $10 tier. You get all of that. Um, and so much more. In the meantime, be nice people, make good choices and be present.